Section two, importing data. In this section, we are looking at the various ways of importing data into Excel to cover the following questions. 1A, importing text file. 1B, importing CSV file from the study guide, which is provided to you with this course. So the first concept or the first question that we have is called importing data. That means now we are looking at a concept of importing data into Excel. Somebody has typed data in a text file. A text file is a TXT file in which people can type just like how you type in Word. You could also type that using a notepad, the software called as notepad. So a person has typed something in a text file. I want that typed matter to come into Excel or to be imported into Excel and to come into the respective columns or cells. interesting How does it come into the respective columns and cells? Because the typing is not done in Excel. Typing is done on a normal white page. So let's look at this first question. It says open the instructors.txt file in Excel and indicate that the data has headers. Tabs are delimiters. Open instructors.txt file in Excel. Indicate data has headers and tabs are delimiters. What the hell is tabs are delimiters? Now let's come to that and let's understand what are these, right? So now I'm going to follow this question. I'm going to open Excel and let's have a look at what he's told us to do. So he told us to open a TXT file called instructors.txt. So I'm going to simply go into file and I'm going to say, okay, open. And obviously the file is stored somewhere. So I'm going to go to browse and I'm going to say, okay, wherever my file is, let's open it from there. I go to my D drive. Uh, I go into uh, Microsoft. Where did it go? Yeah, I go into Magic Finds Report and then I go into Microsoft Office and I go into Excel 2019. And here is my instructors.txt. But right now you can't see it. Because by default, Excel is supposed to open only Excel files. That's the reason it's not visible to you over here. Down here, I've got all Excel files. I'm going to choose all files. And when I do all files, I get something known as instructors. This file appeared only when I chose all files. So I choose my instructors. I say, okay, there is some data in this file. I need to bring it. And I click on open, just like you click for normal files. A window comes up telling me that you are trying to import some text into Excel. And as I told you, delimiters, the word delimiters was something that had come in the question. It's over here, delimited. Kya hai ye delimited? So it says over here, characters such as comma or tabs separate each field. Thick. So I'm not touching anything. I'm keeping it delimited. Down here, I've got a preview of the data, as you can see, instructor, AMI, strength training, yoga, Charlie, cardio training. And here I've got an option, my data has headers. Now what this means is that the data that I'm importing into Excel, the first row of the data is a heading and it's not data. I say, yes, it is a heading of a instructor is not a name of a person. It is instructor is a heading. I choose my data has header. That's all I did. I'm not changing anything over here. It's delimited. Yes. It has headers. Yes. I go next. When I go next, Excel is asking me, what is your delimiter? Is it a tab? Is it a semicolon? Is it a comma? Is it a space? I say it is a tab. When I say it is a tab, you will realize in the preview, the text has moved away. Watch. The text is together. Digo, the text is together now. As soon as I switch on the tab, 
my text shifts. It means that now my text is going to get divided into two columns. That's why this line is coming between. Then I say, okay, let's go next. I don't touch anything else. And I say, finish. And now my data has come. As you all can see, it has beautifully come automatically in the cells. A1 may instructor A2 may AME, A3 may Meline, A4 Kali, A5 may Chali, B5 cardio, B4 yoga. It has automatically placed the text inside the cells when I imported it from text file. So I will explain to you how and why does Excel know that the data which has come over here has got tab as a delimiter and how is it that he puts this data in respective cells without me specifying it. So I'm going to open the same instructors file, but this time I'm going to open it in notepad, the software in which this gets created. So I'm opening the same file, the same instructors file and watch and you will realize why and how does this delimiter business work. It's very important for you all to understand this because otherwise you'll not know how the data has come like that. So I'm opening that file. See the way this data has been typed. Instructor normal type kiya hai, usne ami type kiya hai. Ami or strength ki beech mein itna sara gap kaise aa gaya? This gap has come because that person had, instead of giving us space, this is space. This is space. Okay. This is tab. This is space. This is again space. Now I've given space between my characters. I've taken out tab. Okay. Watch out this same file. Now I've given space and not given a tab. And I'm going to save this file. So what is important? If you want your data to come in respective columns, you need to either give a space or you need to give a tab key. If I'm going to give a space, what will Ami happen? Ami will come in one column. Strength will come in the other column. Training will come in the third column. Right or wrong? Naturally, na? because every space means a new column. That's the reason why we don't give a space and we give a tab when we type in our, this file, because we don't want the three words to go in three columns. I want strength training to come in one column and I want Amy to come in the second column. That's possible only because I gave a tab between Amy and strength. And because I used a tab key in my notepad, over there, when I was importing, I chose the option of tab. It asked me an option, if you remember. Ki aapka delimiter tab hai, comma hai, space hai, kya hai. So abhi ek kaam karte hai, to make you understand it even better is very simple. I will put a comma instead of tab between the words that I want in a different column. Okay. I put commas this time. Now I'm going to save this file as instructors too, just so that there's no confusion. And I am going to do the same thing. I am going to go back to file and back to open. And I'm going to choose this time instructor two, and I'm going to open it. The same window will come giving me the data as I had typed, as you can see. Delimited, yes, my data has it as yes. Now let's go next. Now see the fun. Now I've chosen tab as my delimiter. What has happened? All the text is together and there is a line over here. As soon as I remove tab and I put comma, see what happens. My data has got divided into two columns because in my notepad, I had chosen comma as a delimiter or as a separator. And now when I use the comma and I say next and finish, the data will come the same way as before with 
each one coming in an individual cell. Similarly, we have data which is also imported or you can say exported in a form of known as CSV files. Now, CSV files, the full form is comma separated values. That means the Excel file which you create, once you save it as a CSV file, first of all, just to let you know that CSV files are created using Excel. So we don't use a notepad or a Microsoft Word to create a CSV file. We use Excel to create CSV files. And once a file is created in Excel as a CSV file, that file, the data in that file is separated using a comma. That's why it's called comma separated values, CSV. So why do we need these CSVs and why, first of all, are we going to import a CSV? If a CSV is created in Excel, so you would import a CSV only if the file is not created by you. That's the first logic behind it. Because anyways, if you have to create a CSV file, might as well just open Excel and put your data in that and make it into a CSV. But if somebody else sends you a CSV file, Suppose he sends you a file with, let's say, 100 phone numbers, and he says, I want you to update this CSV file, and I want you to add another 50 numbers, 50 phone numbers. There's no other way I can do it, except importing it into Excel, and then adding those 50 numbers, and then again, converting it back to a CSV file and sending it back to them. That's the reason why CSV becomes an important aspect of Excel. CSV are files which are used to transfer phone numbers onto phones. So if I have a name and phone number and I convert that into a CSV file, I can import the CSV file on my phone and automatically it will go into my phone as my contact list. That's one idea of using a CSV. The second and the most important is all the companies who are dealing in SMS blast. SMS blast is uh, the messages that you receive from different companies on your phone. You know, you receive so many messages, discount from Domino's or uh, a discount from Sabaro or, you know, some real estate guys will message you saying there's a building available for sale. And, you know, all these messages that you receive from various companies, they have your data in form of CSV, which is uploaded on a software from where these messages come to you. So if you realize whenever you get an SMS, you will never be able to track down from which phone number actually the message is coming. Because a lot of times those messages don't have a phone number. They just have a name on it. So you can't, and you can't even reply back to those messages. If you try to reply to those messages, your message won't go through because it's a one way traffic. The company has just hired another company to send all these junk messages to you. And for that, they convert the data into a CSV uploaded onto their server or their uh, the company software. And from there, the messages are coming to you. All right, so this is where CSV is very much used. So now we are going to create a C uh, and import a CSV into our Excel file. The question says, import class schedule.csv file as a table to the current worksheet. So let's look at this, how we're going to import it. So I'm going to open Excel and we're just going to try to import a CSV this time. Last time we did the text. Today we are doing the CSV. All right. So you should be now able to see my Excel sheet. And 
I'm going to import the CSV onto this particular file. So to import a CSV, I'm going to go to data. Under data, I have an option from, from text slash CSV. Recording in progress. Right. Now I think it's clear. There was some disturbance. So we'll go to data and we'll go to from text slash CSV. And here a window will open up. Now this will take a little time because he's trying to um, locate from where you want to import this particular file. So the window takes a little while to open up. There you go. So the window has come up and I have to import it. So I know where my file is. I'm just going to go into that folder and I'm going to see if I can import the file. Here it is. Class schedule. This is a CSV file. As you can see, I told you a CSV is comma separated values. You can see in this preview very clearly that there is a comma after every statement. 101 comma performance key only comma 20, right? So this is how the file is created as a CSV. And then we go to import. And again, a window will open up asking us where you want to put this data. There comes the window and he shows you how your data is going to look. See how well organized it's coming. It's coming proper in tabular format. There's an option here straight away to load. I will say, no, I want to go to load too, because I want to decide where I want this data. If you have an existing file, which has got data on one sheet, then you can say new worksheet. But if you have a blank sheet, you will say existing worksheet and you will just click on okay. And your data will come in a perfect table format in Excel. 